Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I still believe in my spirit. Amen. That there's something more that you need to get from God tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I cannot pull it down. <laughs> you have to pull it down. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Let me read this scripture to you. You know, we were talking about, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We were talking about um, uh, vision, remember. And um, the last time, two times we were together, Praise God. The Lord just gave us a download. I entitled them the coming shaking. I don't whether you realize it or not. Amen. None of that that was in inside of my head when I stood before you. And so none of it was prescribed, pre-thought of or anything. And so <clears throat> when we left, what when the last in Sunday, I guess, the last time we were together for a service anyway. Um then the Holy Spirit uh, dropped a couple of more scriptures inside of me. I kind of felt in my heart the Lord wanted to say something else on the subject. So we're going to look at these two um, scriptures. Understand this. Understand this. I was speaking to a baby earlier. See, this coming shaking, it has already begun. It's already begun. See, when you think of in the context and with the writer, the Apostle Paul wrote it. He talks about everything falling in the presence of the Lord. So you can, when you immediately think of that, of course, you think of walls. You know, walls can be for several reasons. To protect or to hide behind. In this particular case, that which shall remain is that which protects. That which is foundational in your life. That which is coming down is that which men are hiding behind. God will expose everything. And so, when you speak of retrospect to people, what is God exposing? Your heart. Hear me now. The first thing that he would expose in, your, in the church is your heart to yourself. For you to do what? To judge yourself. Amen. The shaking will continue. If you don't judge yourself, then you will be judged. You hear me? I told you before, and I keep emphasizing this. God began the shaking in the world. It is not judgment. He's began the shaking. One scripture puts it this way. When God drops the plumb line, it's like you ever see a brick mason lay walls where he will drop a line. To make sure that the house is not crooked. Eh? And that, I've been around my house, wife too long, eh? <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's the first time I ever did that. Boy, that slipped out. <laughs> anyway, to make sure that the top of the bricks touch the line and that it is straight. 
the Lord is showing the crookedness in the world that has been hidden by most. And in so doing, it is exposing people's heart. Have you noticed? Of course, you heard me say, you heard me say a number of times, I was blown away. And I knew this was coming. I saw it in the spirit, but I never thought it would begin in the political arena. And so what do you do? People who hit their hearts, you've not known what they're saying. Now they're being forced to expose themselves. Now we should fear and tremble. We who are in the church. Because the same thing will happen in the church. Do you hear me? Those who God have been, that's why he's starting with um, the leadership. When I said he's going to smite the shepherds. Because many of them he's been dealing with for quite some time. Listen to me. What I said before, when God judges, the people see, the world see. Eyes are open when he judges. When God smites the shepherds, those who have been under them blinded, eyes will be open. That's the mercy of God. Their eyes will be open to the truth. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I gave you an example of a minister in Atlanta. When God smite. But many of those people did not even did not even leave. They made excuses for him. See, God will not continually allow the corruption of his people. Because the example that we gave when it comes to the worshipers, when it comes to those who stand in the pulpit under shepherds, the pulpit is the footstool of God's throne, the place of authority. And when one begins to move in that realm, you open yourself up to that realm and like a, as like a filter, the things of God flows through to the people. Well, you got two sides of that realm. If your heart is not right, if you're in rebellion, don't judge yourself, then stuff will begin to come from the different side of that realm and it will empty itself out on the people. This is why, brother, so you see whole congregation fall for untruths and lies. And they don't even see it. They don't even see it. So God means business now. Now let's look at the Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Let's start here. The scripture the Holy Spirit gave me. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now everything in the kingdom of God is, a, is in a process. One, one of those, one description of that process the Bible uses is building. Another description of the process the Bible used is sowing and reaping. But notice it's the process. Amen. And so ultimately in this process we will be gathered together unto him. Okay. Paul describes the finality of it all. But in between this point and where we are now, the process will continue. The process will become more difficult. Amen. This is why it is so important for you to know where you stand now in the process. The virtual truth of where you stand. See, every man is right in his own eyes. You need to take off your glasses, what you see through, and allow the Holy Spirit to put on his glasses for you. Because if you do not, 
It's like going into a battle and not having what you need to survive. And Paul tells us at the end of this process, many will fall. You hear me? That is the sad part about all of this. Many in the church will fall, but there will be a great harvest of the world. A great harvest. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That doesn't have to be that way in retrospect to you. You hear what I'm saying to you? So he goes on to say, and I gathering together on him, that ye be not soon shaken, because he wrote them in the first book he wrote to them. They asked him about when these things would be. They did not understand it. It shook them. You know, Flavors Josephus and many of them just stopped doing a whole lot of stuff and start looking up for the Lord because <laughs> he wrote it as if it would happen now. <laughs> so he writes them again. No, go on, go on about your life. Go on, go on about your life. But he expounds a little bit more. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us. See, it was the first one he sent them. As that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't be confused. The day of Christ, his appearing. Let no man deceive you. Now, why did he use that word? Because this is where the church is moving into. Brother, sister, the only way that you can be deceived. Okay? Okay. Let's look at our parents, Adam and Eve, where deception first showed up. The only way you can be deceived is through ignorance. This is why he's smiting the shepherd. And to have knowledge and refuse to do. When you refuse to do, then the spirit of deception comes in where once the spirit of revelation came in. The spirit of deception. Now, why did the spirit of deception get in? Because when you refuse to do, it was because of pride. You did not humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Can you see how these spirits are working against us? They're working in conjunction with one another. Can you see it? And that's what's, hence what's the case with Eve. The Bible, Paul tells you in Romans 5, the woman was deceived. The man was not. So, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Now, really, notice in your Bible, that day shall not come is in italics. It was not in the original Greek language. They add that for word flow, okay, to make sense of it when you English people read it. <laughs> so it really says, let no man deceive you by any means for except. That day is implied by what he wrote previously. Except there come a falling away first. Okay? Now, the moment you see that word, and we're going to show you how that falling away will begin. Jesus tells us. When you first hear the word falling away, you think about what? People turn around leaving the, leaving the church and leaving God, right? That's not what he's saying. That's a part of that. But the, but the predominant meaning of what he's saying is not that. When you look at the, the phrase falling away in the Greek, it's where we get our word apostasia or apostasy from. Now look at the word apostasy. It is, listen to it. A defection from truth. See? A forsaking of truth. 
See, it's not people going back into the world. Now you see where the false church arises. The false church arises from the truth. There is a separation, brother and sister, that is coming. It's coming. It has already begun. Look at a friend of mine told me in, in Singapore, one of the largest churches in Singapore, 20,000 plus people, preached a grace message, hyper grace. You've heard it. Basically, in a nutshell, without going through a whole lot, hyper grace simply is once saved, always saved. That's what it is. That you cannot fall away from the grace of God. It is a half truth. Now, I'm going to call names. This guy named Prince, he's a big teacher. That guy is dangerous. But he has led Western churches into this mess. It's, it's crap from the pit of hell. See, there's pride involved in that. Listen, there ain't no new revelation. Do you hear me? There's just a, simply a revealing of what has been given. And when this pride, and I can see ministers under this, that, well, you know, I'm the, I'm the only one preaching this. I'm the only one. You know, a bull crap. God will have other witnesses concerning this, or concerning that. That is, that is dangerous. God will always have a balance in the body to protect us, to temper things. See? And so this is, I'm just saying, this is just an example of apostasy. But it, says it has begun. It is weaving itself like a snake through the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it, it is a part of the itching ear. God is actually allowing people to get what they have in their own heart. That's what in all. What did he say to Israel? From now on, when they came to Kadesh Barria, he said to them, From now on, whatever I hear in my ear, that's what you're going to get. He allowed those wall laws to begin to work against him. What am I saying to you, brother and sister? Listen, there are certain spiritual characteristics characteristics that must be predominant in your life in these last days. You cannot abandon them if you are to stay on track. Okay, but now this is the end of where we're going. Then we're going to go and I'm going to show you the beginning, how we how we're going to get here. But this is the end. This is the ultimate. He says, all right, a falling away first. And. Everybody say and see, that's two things. And the man of sin being revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, the other place we saw that word in respect to Judas. Son of perdition. Again, that is one who once knew the truth. Right? Lucifer was that one, didn't he? Who once knew the truth. Now he's the son of perdition. See, remember I told you one of the things that God would allow that will begin to blanket the body of Christ at a level that has never had before. And that's pride. You see it in the political arena, don't it? The pride of people. Brother, sister, I'm saying to you, it will hit the church like a storm. Like a storm. And God will allow it. He will allow it. So two things. Now watch, watch the spirit of this man. He's talking about the Antichrist. That's who he's talking about. Who opposed it and exalted himself. See that? Pride and resisting truth. Who opposed it and exalted himself above all that is called God. But the church people call in it are deceived because, listen to me, they waited too late to deal with their deception. They waited too late to deal with their deception. They did not humble themselves. 
He goes on to say, or that is worship. So that as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And of course, you, to understand fully what he's talking about, we're not going to go there. He's talking about the abomination of desolation that Daniel talks about. So where would this end? This will end with the church totally torn apart. The shaking. That the separation will come. In the meantime, in our brethren, okay, the first church, the church in the wisdom, Israel, will have built a temple. Jewish worship is established again in the temple. There is peace now, a false peace, that this man will bring forth after a great war, short-lived. The war will be short-lived. And this one will arise and bring peace. Daniel put it this way. He shall establish the covenant again for one week. That's seven years. Okay? There was a cutoff 77 years. 70 of seven. 490. There was a cutoff in, in Jesus' day, Daniel prophesied the Messiah will be cut off. But then the clock stopped ticking. It will start ticking again, Paul says, in this day, before the appearing of the Lord. The last seven years, the clock will start ticking again. Do you hear me? We have been in a period of grace. Since the grace giver brought the truth. The Lord Jesus. Right? Right? But brother, sister. He's showing us in the end. The clock will begin to tick again. The temple will be built. The Antichrist will go and sit in that temple. And say worship me as God. You get it? Again in the church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The New Testament church will be in shambles. Okay? The false church out of the bride will have arisen. The false church will war against the true church. Amen? And Ishmael, the first son that came out of Abraham, will step up his war against the promised child, Isaac. Hear me? Tension, war. War in Israel and war in the church. This is what Paul is describing. Okay? Then he says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now watch this. Now you know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The mystery of iniquity. Iniquity. Iniquity is not just something hidden. Iniquity is something that is ancestral as well. Okay? It is working. It is working ancestrally in the land. It is the fight over the land. The firstborn Ishmael is saying, it is our land. Why was the Arabs so mad at Trump? When he made Jerusalem the capital. Because when he did. The city can never be divided. It is the capital. This is why it's so mad. They want it to be their capital. Amen. The Arabs do. And so iniquity. Is working in the church. 
this inward iniquity, this ancestral stuff that God has been trying to clean his church of. Amen. The eternal suffering that has been going on on the inside of you. You must, you must bring peace within that before this external suffering begins or you will fall. The external suffering is coming, brothers and sisters. It is coming to every nation of the world. Every nation. We've told you a number of times, even in America, we will have to hide. The Lord spoke to me years ago and said, my people need to learn how to hide. You see that in the New Testament. When the church began, they flee, they fled. All the church fled except the apostles, the Bible said. Well, why were the apostles, now watch this, why were the apostles so protected? Because of this, they were so anointed. That's why only the anointing, the presence of God on you will protect you in these coming days. Amen. Just like it did Jesus. And no one will be able to take your life unless you lay it down for him. Do you hear me? So iniquity will begin to work. People will begin to lose the ability to discipline themselves. Amen. Things that God has been trying to get out. I'm talking about his people now. I mean, it's the same with the world. But things that God has been trying to get out of his people through tests and trials, amen, those things will begin, amen, to overrun your garden. Because you did not allow the husbandman to prune you. You hear me? So the iniquity will begin to work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Now the Holy Spirit is not going to be taken from the earth. It will be a mess. And it means his ability to restrain. The Holy Spirit in us is what? Salt. Amen. When the little salt that was left. And Sodom and Gomorrah was taken, which was Lot. The city was destroyed. Amen. Lot stayed too long. And he felt that he could not leave. One who was despondent. Amen. People stay in their mess too long where there is no desire or will to fight. This is what happened to Lot. The only way Lot got out was because of the mercy of Abraham. The mercy of God through Abraham. In other words, it pays who you know. <laughs> Amen. That's how he got out. That's how he got out. And so, the church, the church's ability to to Preserve, as the scripture puts it, um, what is the word he uses? To restrain the hand of the enemy until that stops. And then what happens during that period, during that period of that, brother, sister, when he sits down, when he sits down, the mark, during that period, the mark will be initiated. The mark of the beast. And something will happen to the bride from a glorious standpoint. Do you hear me? And so, the Lord direct dealing with the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles will have been fulfilled. And God will directly deal with his people now. It's all about the Jews. 
all about the Jews. I'm not saying there will not be people that will not be saved. But it will be a whole lot harder. To be saved, it will cost you your life. It will cost you your life. Brother, sister, I'm telling you. Most to the degree of suffering, they will fall. The enemy has most of the church deceived. What does it come down to? We're going to see it in this other scripture. It has always been about your survival. Your survival through tests. Your survival and your spiritual growth. Your survival in the end has always been about how much you love him. Christians run around here with mere words. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I don't deny any Christian in what they say about loving the Lord. Here is the question. Do you love him enough? It is a fruit. It can be measured. If your love does not outgrow the level of darkness that has begun, you will fall. It's just that simple. And he's telling you, many, many will fall away, forsake the truth. If your love is not for him, then who is it for? You. Self. If you do not allow him to prune you, self will rule in this day. Self will rule up under a religious cloak. A religious cloak. And just as Jesus did, the religion of the day, which was Judaism, Killed as much as the Romans did. The Romans saw them as rebellious and out of control. The Jews, the priests, the leaders in that day saw them in that way as a threat to their religious structure. Huh? When they brought the disciples in to beat them. For they had perceived they had been with Jesus, which they call that way. The power of God, the new move of God, came right up against the institution, the religious institution of that day that missed their day of visitation. There was a split. It broke off from that which held the anointing. Do you hear me? When the veil was rent, God left. That which held the anointing, now it went on the church. It left the Old Testament church and went on the New Testament church. Huh? And many in the Old Testament church did not recognize it. Those in some in leadership did. They did. How much proof can you do you need when Old Testament saints come out of the grave and walking in the streets? <laughs> They're walking in the streets, testifying of the one they just killed. See, this is another reason why the Lord is smiting the shepherds, those in leadership. It's another reason why he's doing it. Jesus was hard against them. He called them whited walls. He called them out their names. You vipers. You lead, go out of all of your way to lead one. That they, they, they'd be just like you, Jesus said. See? And God will smite them. But this is, again, it has already begun. The falling away. God judging individuals. But it's been selective. But it will blanket the entire church. Because God will purify his house. 
Do you hear me? Now, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. We saw the end of where we're headed. What will start us down that road? Now, this is Jesus talking. Matthew 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And the disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. Now, only his disciples. Jesus said unto him, See ye, see ye, not all there, see not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be, one, be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And, and you, you read, read about, you know, um, I think it was um, Titus, I think, later on that came in and um, totally, totally took one stone after the other. And that typically was not the case. But they took one stone after the other. And threw the thing down. One of the reasons they did it, because it prophesy, another reason they did it, you know, was to get all the gold out of it. One after the other. So Jesus is telling them. And as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, now watch what they're asking. Tell us, when shall these things be? Number one. And what shall be the sign of thy coming, number two, and of the end of the world, or the age, number three? Now, Jesus has to answer three questions, right? So he starts from the beginning all the way to our day. He starts right where they are now all the way to our day. This chapter covers the entire thing. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed, here again, what did Paul say? That no man deceive you. Brothers and sisters, deception will be a big destroyer. If there is deep deception in the church, remember what I tell you, two reasons. Ignorance or a lack of obedience, which is pride. All right? That no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Now, first of all, remember the word of God watched seven times. The two predominant things that's at the top of this list. Number one, he is saying not that many will come and say, I'm Jesus Christ. No, many will come to affirm that Jesus is the Christ. This is what's going to deceive a lot of people. A lot of wolves in sheep clothing. They're not with us. But they're going to say, Jesus is the Christ. And so many people are going to, without knowing, going to say, well, they have God. They just said Jesus is Christ. This is what he's saying first. And yeah, there will be some. <clears throat> now, listen, I mean, really? How many people can you fool saying, I'm Jesus Christ? <laughs> I mean, come on, especially in the Western world. Which will fool more people? Those coming alone said, yes, Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed one. Not, not Mohammed, not Confucianism, not Buddha. Jesus is. So this is what Jesus is saying. Many will arise, more will arise and testify that I am the Christ. Okay. And the other one too, but this will be more predominant. And ye shall, I wrote in my Bible and I can't read over, and ye shall be, what is that word there? Verse 6. And ye, and ye shall, of course, I wrote over it, and so I can't hardly see that word. And ye shall hear, okay, of wars. And rumors of wars. See not. See, see that ye be not troubled. Now listen to him. 
For all of these things must come to pass. But what did he say? But the end is not yet. Okay? For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdoms against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence. Now, brother, sister, we're in the beginning of that. But we are not at the apex of it. You know why? Everybody's not talking about it. It will get seven times worse till it's on everybody's lips. Do you hear what I'm saying? So you see now we're at the beginning stages. It will get seven times worse. And earthquakes in divers or different places. Now what did Jesus say in verse 8? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay? So listen, technically speaking, we're at the beginning of the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> We're not even into the middle of it yet. Beginning of sorrows. We see, we've seen pestilence in Africa, in other nations, but mostly Africa. But brother, sister, it has not touched every nation of the world, and it will. So we still a ways away. All right? Then, now watch this. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Is that what they did in Jesus' day? So I told you it's coming again. Now that's letting you know right now then that what? That what you represent now is being attacked. That also means that you are now more of a threat. The enemy does not move until you become a great th threat. When the power of God fell on the disciples, then the threat increased, right? And the church began to run for their life. So that's signaling to you right there that the power of God now is beginning to move in his church. And again, a lot of, brother, sister, the killing will be by institutionalized churches against God's people the same way it was in Jesus day they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then okay here we go here it is right here here is the great falling away. That's what Paul mentioned. Why will you be offended when the Lord warned you that this would happen to you? Why would you be offended? Because you're not at the level spiritually to deal with it. That's why. And most of the church presently is not. Now, if you become offended, what has just been challenged in your life? The number one thing that you need to survive in these coming days, the love of God. You see what the devil is after? Brother, sister, your love for God will be tried and tested as it never had before. It is the only thing that will see you through. It is the only thing that will ensure your survival. It is the only thing that will make you like him, that will purge you and make you clean. The devil is coming after it. And God will allow it. I show you where we end up. People will take the mark because they don't love him that much. They love their life more. Why will you take them up to survive so you can eat, so you can survive in that present world at that time? Well, Jesus told you to save your life, you will lose it. And there ain't none of this, well, I had to, Lord. 
You, you, you know, in my heart, I love you. No, you, no, you don't. You need to understand it. But, but the church will be in the middle of deception. So many will believe that. That they can take it and the Lord will forgive them anyway. No, he won't. That is the apex. That ends it. Because this mark is biomechanical. It is both human and mechanical. It is what will tie everybody together. The Antichrist will be able to speak to everybody at the same time. Virtually, it will change your DNA. It is the Nephilim agenda. Do you hear me? It will change your DNA. So there is no return from it. But because of deception again, many will believe it. Many will believe it. So he says, many shall be offended and shall do what? Betray one another and shall hate one another. That tells you right now, right there, that what? Love is gone. Hate one another. Now, we don't know what the world is going to do. But you need to zero in on the church. Jesus is talking about the church. Hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Why? Because the church is ripe now. She's in deception. So now in this climate where there is hardly no love for God in his church, many prophets will come with a message, a false message. Christ, yes, he is the Christ. And so many people would be deceived even more, not listening to their message because they saying they come in his name. Now watch this. Remember what that um, Paul talked about iniquity. And because iniquity shall abound. Huh? Those things, those tares, those ancestral things that you picked up over your life that opposes God because you did not allow him to purge you of it. The love of many shall wax cold. Brother, sister, there's not much return from that. Many that will move into the false church, many will not make it back out of it. Why do we do what we do? Because we love him. I say again, and you need to understand. Difficulties and hard times will make you better or bitter. When it gets so bad, people become so bitter, they're going to become offended. And when you become offended, Proverbs said, a person offended is harder to win back than a fortified city. Proverbs says. Many swept up in there will not make it back. They will step over into perdition. This is where we are headed. It has already begun. When God allowed difficulty in your life, you should let patience have its perfect work. Amen. The church is not getting where it needs to go without suffering. It will not. And I don't care who you are, what message you have, that's what the word of faith movement, the fallacy of it. Many thought that they could confess all troubles away from their life. Amen. I know I was in the middle of it. But I didn't fall for it. The Lord allowed me to see. That's why I preach about suffering so much. I saw it. I saw the distinctions that were not made. 
And many I knew were in the, in the movement. They fell. They crumbled. They became offended. Because they thought that should not have been happening to them because of all the faith that they had. <laughs> Amen. Brother, sister, only thing your faith does is to make sure that the weapon formed against you will not prosper. It will be formed against you. <laughs> it will work against you. But its ultimate end will not bring you down. Amen. That's faith. Huh? Was it formed against the apostles? Of course it was. But the devil didn't accomplish what he wanted. And each one of them died, that died, their death meant something. Each one of them individually. Now let me show you something. And we really need to learn from him. We have been predominantly living now in the epistles. A transition is coming beginning this year. There will be an emphasis of the epistles of John. John the apostle. Why? Because John learned something very quickly that the other ones did. John was in a class by himself when it came to the apostles, all by himself. John learned what Enoch learned. He learned what Enoch learned and was translated. So here's John now writing about himself. The apostle, he called himself the apostle whom Jesus loved. <laughs> He's writing about himself. Now John had the same spot at the table. Can you imagine that? And he's laying his head on Jesus' bosom. Get the picture, brother, sister. Get the picture. And Peter sitting down whispering to John. What did he say? What did he mean? <laughs> See? Your head on Jesus' bosom, you know his heartbeat. You know what drives him. You have his burden. If he whispers something, you hear it first. You have to interpret it for everybody else. That's the lovers. That's the bride. Have his heartbeat. He whispers to her. Huh? The Melchizedek priesthood. They echo loudly what he says. John, when everybody else ran away, John was the only one that didn't. He didn't fear death. Now listen, and he did this in the short span of Jesus' life. Huh? He did it for the baptism of fire was poured out on them. Huh? Peter tried to hang tough, but he couldn't. He didn't love Jesus that way. He tried, came in there. John let him in the courts. But when he came face to face, in other words, you can say it this way. When it came time for Peter to take the mark, he cursed and said, I don't know him. Peter represents over 50% of the church. Huh? The five wise and the five foolish. If you're not perfected in love, if you don't mature in love, you really don't know him. Huh? Listen, we can see God's nature by the sun. Almighty God, he is, he is, the Bible says, his character, he's humbled and of low degree. 
This is the character of Almighty God. You would think someone <coughs> with such power will be shouting his badness throughout the universe. Huh? <laughs> but he's of low degree. Brother, sister, you're not going to be with him that way unless you become like him that way. That is not weakness. That is strength. Anyone can allow their flesh to do whatever it wants. But everyone cannot control their flesh. That is the power of God. Do you hear me? So here's John. He lets Jesus in. He lets Peter in. And Peter is crushed under the test. Now the Lord warns him. The Lord warns him. Peter, you're not ready for what's coming. Oh, yes, I am, Lord. Oh, yes, I am. I will never deny you. That's most of the church now. The Lord is telling the church, you're not ready for what's coming. But most because they're religious. They have a religious spirit. Listen. If you're going to fall out when somebody don't speak to you, <laughs> what makes you think that you're going to withstand the darkness that threatens your life? Most people can't even walk in love that goes to church every Sunday. The love of many shall wax cold. The devil has the church now right where he wants it. This brother, sister, is the great falling away. See? Not leaving God, forsaking the truth. What truth? God is love. That truth. Look what Jesus said in verse 13. But he that endure unto the end. He who continues to walk in love. He who continues to mature in love shall be saved. Shall be saved. Not just save and make it into heaven. But save from everything that the devil is ready to throw against the church. Because Jesus said, I'm going to build it and the gates of hell shall not prevail. This is what he's talking about. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Listen, all of this is going on. Great havoc. Pestilence. People are dying. Earthquakes. It's a total mess, brother, sister. A total mess. Over half of the church have stepped into apostasy. But there is a remnant. That is shining bright with his love. Well, it's being translated. Boom, 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 boom. All over the world being translated. Because everything is in a mess. Many of transportations are broke down. You can't go where you want to go. If you don't have the mark, you are marked. <laughs> and you're being translated all over the place, carrying the gospel, carrying the gospel of the kingdom. Not just Jesus saves. Get right. He's coming. He's coming. His end is near. He's coming. Then shall the end come. And then Jesus mentions what Paul mentions. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. Standing in the holy place. Whosoever read it. 
let him understand. So he, he calls it, and that's what Daniel calls it, the abomination. That, that's when the Antichrist, I just read in Thessalonians, will go in the temple and declare himself God. See, Jesus started from where he is, where they presently were, until the end. He went all the way through. Then let them which is in Judea flee into the mountains. He said, get out of there. The mark is coming. Hide. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take one thing out of his house. Neither let him which is in the fear return it to take clothes. And woe unto them that are pregnant in those days. And pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall there be great tribulation, such as the world, such has not since the beginning of the world, this time or ever should be. Why? Because this is the three and a half month. We're in the middle of the week that Daniel talked about. The clock start ticking, the seven years. This is at the three and a half year mark. Now we are not. Just in the tribulation. We're now in the great tribulation. This is the pouring out of God's wrath. That, that John wrote about. The bowls of wrath. All these things. It is horrific. Let's read the book of Revelation. So brother, sister. Again. I showed you where we would end up in this period where you take the mark. But it will begin here. The enemy is coming after your love. The shaking, the shaking will make you better or bitter. If you become bitter, you become, you're going to become offended. Offended at God. And because of that, you become mad at God. Why is this happening to me? And that which God could not get out of you, iniquity, will overgrow your field, your soul. And you will step away from the truth. You will forsake the truth. The truths that you had, the truths that were keeping you somewhat in the presence of God, now will be totally stolen from you. See, brother, sister, even the shaking will shake out of you truth that is not grounded in you. Do you hear me? Very important. It will shake out of you truth that is not grounded in you. That has not become a part of you. Amen. That that which cannot be shaken remains. The only thing that will remain is that which has become a part of you. God is love, God is life, and God is light. In the midst of this period, your love for God will grow. His life will be poured into you like never before. And his light will purify you. And Isaiah said in 60, it will be seen literally on you. That light will begin to shine through your skin. The light ones. They will know. The enemy will know. Amen. Something will happen to your body. Amen. It cannot be killed. Do you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. When you reach a level. Who, who's the prototype? Old Testament, New Testament. Enoch, John. How I many of you know John the Apostle didn't die? 
He still lives in the Isle of Palamas. He's still there. Jesus said to Peter, I said, if he stays until I come, what is it with you? <laughs> you keep doing what I say. <laughs> Jesus said it plainly. Sure, he got his glorified body. If you go over there looking for him, you won't see him because he's in a different realm. But he did not die. He's still here. He's still in the Isle of Patmos. He will lead the company of prophets in the last days. One of John's duties in the last days is to teach you the mysteries that he learned about the love of God. He learned it very quickly. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Holy Father, we thank you for your blessed promises. You have shown us in the word that it will cost us everything. To have what you promised. To have what you desire to give us. It will cost us everything. Our identity as a person. Our identity as a Christian. Our identity in the so-called church today. The titles, the names, the platform, the exaltation, the places of exalted, the, the, the exalted places that we make for one another. You said, except we become as a little child, we will not see the kingdom of heaven. That place of authority of rulership, of reigning, many will not see because they will not humble themselves. Holy Father, keep us from pride in an uplifted heart. Holy Father, You know, and only you know, what stands between us and you. Revealed it, Lord. Revealed it. That we may overcome it. We know time is of the essence. And for many... They are out of time. So we pray. Holy Spirit. Do what you were sent to do. Show us our King. As we behold him, we see our great need. As we behold him, we are able to be changed if we can stand face to face and look into the light and allow the light to transform us as we humble ourselves and admit to what we see. You said every man is right in his own eyes. Help us to see ourselves, not no one else. Help us to see ourselves through Holy Spirit's eyes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, just lift up both hands and thank God for his word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, let drop within them now. What is needed to forge forward. 
Let drop within them now what is needed to pull away like Moses did and watch the glory of God burn. Help us to humble ourselves. Help us to humble ourselves that we might see, that we might see, that we might see, that we may not be deceived. Help us to humble ourselves. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Father, clean their hands right now. You say those that will stand before you, clean hands and a pure heart. Right now, clean their hands. Clean their hands. Pour gold light upon their hands. That as they continue to humble themselves, it will flow to their heart. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let this word be imparted into them now. Let it go deep within them, Lord, and chart the course of their life that they may stand in that day. In that day. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. We behold you. We behold you through an unveiled face. Through an unveiled face. The truth just removed a level of darkness. Now they behold you with an unveiled face. Let this truth become a part of them now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Mara. Oh, yes, Lord Barakata. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let it pour into them. Water up on a dry ground. Let it seep into them right now. Thank you, Papa. 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 You, Papa. Oh, glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Praise God. Well, you got it. We got it what we came for. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory to you, great King. We bless your people tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, I pray you got something out of that. Praise God.